So a very important part of this evening as it is every year. In fact, there's almost no more important part in any of these sort of nights. I speak of the Hall of Fame with two more inductees. It's one of the highlights of this evening. And into the Bowls WA Hall of Fame, two more of WA's greats will induct members 38 and 39. I'd like to call upon Bowles WA President and Hall of Fame Committee member Kerry Anderson again to come forward and announce the 2018 Hall of Fame inductees. Give her a round of applause as she makes her way up on a stage, everyone. Well, the Hall of Fame is the highest honour that Bowles WA can bestow. So it is um, my great pleasure to induct two uh, new special people into that Hall of Fame this evening. John Ernest Gustafsson um, was born in 1874 and sadly passed away in 1967. John was the first West Australian to win an Australasian singles in 1924. Uh, this was held at the Mount Lawley Bowling Club uh, with 500 spectators present. So um, in 1924, that would have been a fairly amazing sight to see, I can imagine. Uh, John went on to win another five state singles titles and several state pairs titles. He was also a member of the um, Australian Council of Bowls uh, for the Centenary Carnival in 1929. He played most of his bowls at the Fremantle Bowling Club and he's a life member of that club. He also played some of his bowls at um, East Fremantle Bowling Club. John truly was a legend of his time and it gives me great pleasure to present this award um, to John. Um, to accept this award on his behalf, um, I welcome Matt Newey. He achieved so much as a, one of the pioneers of the sport. What influenced uh, the club to make that nomination? Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a long story, however, I'll make it as short as I can. Um, <clears throat> about three years ago, um, the Fremantle Bowling Club uh, decided to host an event called the um, uh, Heritage Bowls event. Um, and there are two parts to, to this event. The first, the first part was um, um, just a, a friendly game, and we played against the Mount Lawley Bowling Club. Um, I'm not sure whether any Mount Lawley members there. Um, and uh, well, Mount Lawley is you know, one, uh, one of the clubs that are more than 100 years old as well as, as, as we are. So we decided to, to kickstart the thing. So we just dressed up in period garb and um, you know, we, we got the balls from the, the, you know, the, um, the lockers at the, the, the darkest parts of our, our, our locker rooms. And then with, with, with the white balls, we, we, had a, we had a great afternoon. But the other part was, uh, and perhaps more importantly, was that we worked very closely with the Fremantle History Library, and together we put together an exhibition, um, and uh, um, an exhibition of our history. And um, Pam Harris, who is the chief librarian, um, gave a lecture on the history of our club. And of course, our club members were were, were you know really chuffed with with the fact that we've, we we have this incredible history. I mean, it's really important to look forward to the future of bowls. Um, and I'll, I'll always remember the, uh, the, uh, the time we had yesterday afternoon with the Future of Bowls um, um, uh, presentation. Um, but it's also important to look back at where, we, where, where we've come from. Um, so that was really the, the imp impetus of, of the, uh, the Heritage Bowls, Bowls event. Um, and so what, what really happened was that uh, during the presentation, we found that um, John uh, Gustafsson, um, had this in incredible um, uh, history and, um, and, and his achievements were, were fantastic. So uh, we, we just thought that, you know, as, as a small club, I mean, at, at Gus's time, and that was what he was called, Gus, um, Fremel was a, was a thriving, huge, uh, very popular club. Um, we are a smaller club now, but we are on, on the rise uh, once again. And we thought that you know, there's no, no better way to, to celebrate our, our club history and our club um, through um, uh, celebrating really what, um, what, what Gus, Gus has done and to use him as a role model um, for, um, for, all, for all our members. Um, so, in, in, so we, as a committee, we, we got together, and thanks to um, Steve uh, Shohoi from Coburn, um, as well as uh, Brian Sikotosto, who, who, um, who uh, encouraged us to, to make this nomination, um, we went ahead and did that, and um, we're absolutely pleased that, uh, 
Gus has uh, been, um, uh, in, in, in knowing the Hall of Fame. Well done to everyone at the club. I'm sure that'll take pride of place at the Fremantle Bowling Club. Congratulations. Well done to you. Thank you, Matthew. An extraordinary 19 club singles titles over a 40-year period as well, and our only national singles title holder in 1924 for several decades, of course. Uh, well done to John Ernst Gust uh, Gustafsson, and congratulations to the Fremantle uh, Club for putting that forward. Inductee number 39, ladies and gentlemen, and again, I'll get Kerry Anderson to come forward and make, well, someone very pleased. Our next undie, uh, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Our next inductee um, needs no introduction to anybody in the room, I'm sure. Um, she has, a stellar career, has had a stellar career, um, 174 state games, um, four times winner of the Connie Hicks um, Bowler of the Year brooch, 20 state titles to her name, um, current state coach. Uh, she's played in National Development Trans-Tasman Series twice. Um, she has been coach of the... Um, uh, NTC coach in 2013. She's been coach of the Australian Pairs team in Hong Kong. Um, the list goes on and on. Uh, she has been a board member. She's been a very significant member of the Fixtures and Events Committee for Bowls WA and her contribution to the state has been amazing. Um, certainly a, a fantastic contribution to this state and a well-deserved winner of um, this award and we certainly welcome Therese Hastings into the Hall of Fame. Our 39th inductee, 16 state titles, the state singles four times, the four times Connie Hicks Bowler of the Year, five time winner of the State 100 Up, twice an Australian Open Pairs winner in 2007 and 2010, the inaugural winner of the Australian Over 60s Pairs in 2016, and that same year awarded the Bowls Australia Coach of the Year and of course our current Ladies State Coach. It is an unbelievable uh, resume. She's been a great mentor to many of the bowlers here this evening. Congratulations, Therese. Come forward. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to see you again. Now, before I ask you some questions, some uh, important messages of congratulations, so I get everyone in the room, including yourself, to turn around and have a look at the big screen. Therese Hastings, or T, as we, we really love to call you these days. What a wonderful, wonderful thing for you to, for, to happen to you, T. Fancy being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well done, Western Australia, for choosing her. What a cherub she is. But, Therese, let me... Um, I'm sure all of your bowling prowesses and all those wonderful things have been said, um, but I can just tell from um, where we go back. And the first one was when we were at an Australian Open once and I came up to you to say hello and she said, you know, we never used to like USA girls. <laughs> oh, OK, that was fine. No problems at all. And then a little bit later, um, in you come into our NTC program and I go to hug you. I don't do hugs, says T. Oh, great. I'm going really well here. Um, but the other thing is we've always been away, um, across from each other. You with the Western Australian Juniors in Halakalani and me, of course, with our Mighty Reds. And uh, we've always come across and we've crossed paths right in with Silver Tear when I got to be your little boss for a while, got back a little bit. And then here we are, we started working together as NTC people and then rooming together. How did that happen? You're the only one that I know that has a pizza with just cheese on it. You're the only one I know that can do a commando roll into your um, tinny, your anchovy tinny. And, but other than that, you're the best mate. You're my partner in, of course, um, our seniors' um, pairs. Um, and then I had to just crawl you along all the time, but just loved every minute of it. And fancy me bowling with Therese Hastings. How exciting. Joining in with you and Ian, you, uh, you with your West Coast Eagles and, of course, me with my Port Power. And, Therese, there's no more worthy recipient I can think of than you. And I'm looking forward to spending a lot more time with you and having lots of fun. Well done. Have an awesome night. And well done, Western Australia. Bowls for um, choosing this wonderful girl. The word legend is used far too often uh, on many occasions, but in this case, it's most deserving. Therese Hastings, the 39th inductee into the Bowls WA Hall of Fame, and personally, I can't think of a more apt person for that great honour. We certainly don't play the game to, uh, to be rewarded in, in such ways, but Therese has 
uh, epitomise what a, a legend, what a Hall of Fame member should be. Her results on the green stand for themselves, uh, so many, many titles, probably one of the best ones, her, her more recent Australian Open uh, over 60s pairs championship with her great mate Faye Lute from South Australia, a magnificent win. But it's not just that, it's administration for Therese that she's been involved in, and of course for me personally, working very close with her in the NTC coaching uh, roles and, uh, and her duties with that. She epitomises what it is to be uh, an exemplary ambassador, great champion and mentor to so many. Therese, congratulations. I hope the celebrations uh, go according to plan and that uh, you just have the most fantastic night celebrating this much and well-deserved uh, well award. Congratulations. You think you've been had, is what you've just said. Um, the first and most important question out of all of that is, uh, Pizza we just cheese. That's just a toasty, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's that. Actually, that's Ian has just pizza with cheese. I have pizza with um, double cheese. Oh. <laughs> well, just no point mucking around when you know what you like. Um, it's a terrific honour. Um, oh, you'll get a chance to speak to so many people. The floor will be yours in a, a few moments. But when you actually hear some of those stories, what are the emotions like at the moment? Well, there's no crying in bowls, but I'm coming very close to it at the moment. So, uh, it's, it's, it really was a thrill when I first found out that um, I was going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame alongside names like Roma and Lee and um, Smiljana Djakovic and, and all the guys that are in that. And uh, it's just to, to hear those guys and, and the people that have come here tonight and the congratulations that I've received um, it really is, it, it's quite heartwarming to have that. When Kerry was reading out all the remarkable things you've done, as is the case when you induct someone, you read all these things out and then say their name, some wag over on yeah. table nine <laughs> shouted out, who is it? <laughs> Which I thought was a bit cheeky. You've obviously got some support out there. Um, there there's probably a couple of words which are not acceptable to be said by an inductee to the Hall of Fame. I'll just say they're a little bit cheeky. Yes, <laughs> they certainly are. Uh, bowls has changed, like every sport changes. Bowls has changed significantly as well. Uh, in your time, what have been the, the biggest changes and what do you think needs to still happen to continue to see bowls being such an important sport in this nation? Well, obviously, I started well, I started in the time when it was still skirts and stockings and double petticoats, even though I never actually went on the green in any of that gear. Um, I saw the change of clothes actually changed bowls quite significantly. Um, obviously, the younger people coming into bowls. Uh, but I think we, we need to embrace change with bowls. We can't keep doing things the way they were done when I first started in bowls. People are more time poor than they ever have been in the past. And I think one of the things that we need to look at is the when we play bowls and the length of time that we play bowls um, to ensure that we still have a game that is competitive but is available for the whole range of people, workers, um, retired people, people at school, the, the whole range. So. It's a thought that seems to have an awful lot of support out there and feel free to expand on that when the... One more question, I promise, just one. Um, such an outstanding career as a player and, and also now as a, as a coach, do you have a preference one way or the other between the two? Because they are such different, um, different roles within the same code. Well, when I'm playing well, I enjoy playing. <laughs> and when it gets harder, I enjoy coaching because I... <laughs> I can tell other people what to do instead of having to do it myself. <laughs> did you ever find that you became a better player when you first started to become a coach or did you go the other way because you bossed yourself around a lot? I know, I actually I started thinking about the things I was asking other people to do and it actually did um, give me the opportunity to look at uh, my processes and my mental approach to bowls and I do think that I started to, to think a bit smarter about my bowls once I started, you know, reading more and, and looking at how 
people responded to different things that, that were said to them or asked of them to do. So, um, yeah, I, I think it did um, has helped me to um, enjoy my bowls a little bit more and also just uh, uh, relax and go with the flow. Here's your chance to relax and go with the flow. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage is hers for the next few minutes. Give her a big round of applause. Our 39th inductee, Therese Hastings. Um, well, before I talk about me, I'd just like to congratulate all the award winners from tonight. And um, it, it's a great night. And well done to Bowls WA and the guys that, that work for Bowls WA and the work that they've put into tonight. It's an awesome effort and um, really much appreciated. <laughs> Obviously, um, I was excited and humbled and proud to be um, nominated to um, be entered, inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I, I thank um, Manning Bowling Club for nominating me um, and thank them for the efforts that they did to, and obviously they did it well because here I am up here now. So thank you to Manning. Um, obviously, um, I owe much of my successful bowls career to lots of people around and I'm obviously going to miss most of them but there are a few people that I really have to thank. Um, obviously starting with my family and I have one of my daughters and um, granddaughter here tonight and uh, the kids when they were growing up they knew that they weren't allowed to be sick on Bowls Day <laughs> and then when they had their family no babysitting on Bowls Day. So, and they've always uh, gone along with that and, and accepted that bowls was the thing that, that mum and grandma did and we won't interfere with that. But also, Ian, uh, he introduced me to the game, which he sometimes wishes he hadn't. <laughs> but he's always supported me and I can't say it better than uh, the song, the words from the song, Ian, you are the wind beneath my wings, always have been and always will be. <laughs> That's the sappy part of my speech now, Don. <laughs> uh, to members of Cardinia and Mosman Park, I started at Cardinia and obviously moved on to Mosman Park where they provided me with the next stage of my career um, and then on to Manning. And the members still continue to support and encourage me from all, all the three clubs. And I really thank them all for, for doing that throughout my whole career. Um, there have been many coaches along the way who have influenced uh, the way I've bowled and also the way that I've gone into coaching. Uh, it all started with Arthur Hall at Cardinia. Um, and it was m magnificent, the fact that he um, the club organised for him to come along at that time and set me straight right from the very start. And then there was Eunice Quinn and Bernice Guile who were the Walba coaches um, and they gave me, introduced me to the state squad. I was invited to come along and play a couple of times. Um, just asked Maureen Beard how useless I was at that time. Um, Lee was probably there at the time too. I couldn't keep my bowls on the green or do anything, but it actually showed me what I needed to do to go to the next level, which was a fantastic opportunity for me at that time. Then there was, they also introduced me to Jim Cook, who's a magnificent coach and way before his time as far as coaching goes with the uh, mental development of the game that he introduced me to. Um, and he had an enormous influence on myself and, and other people uh, like Lee and, and Kerry, who uh, we, we did a lot of work with Jim Cook. All the state coaches, there have been several of them along the way, and I thank them for the efforts that they've actually put into uh, giving up their time and efforts and put a lot of time into women's bowls in WA and helped to uh, progress that the players um, uh, to um, achieve at a greater level. Two very special women who, between them, have um, shared all of my team titles. The first is Maureen Harkin, my great mate from 
Mosman Park days. She taught me how to play the game and uh, also how to respect the history of the sport. She also made me clean my shoes, make sure my hat wasn't crushed and make sure that I was dressed tidily. Um, so she, that was what happened in those days. You got told what to do right from the, the day that you turned up at a club. But honestly, Maureen was a, ma a major part of my career. And the other person is Helen Morse, who has never told me to clean my shoes, or, but I think I've probably told her to. But she just makes playing with her very easy and fun and very rewarding. And um, the latter part of my career, I owe a lot to her companionship and um, support as a bowler from Manning. Thank you. Lastly, to um, Walba and Bowles WA for providing me with the opportunities to play at a state level um, and to Bowles WA for supporting me with coaching opportunities as well. Um, I've always known that I wanted to go on and, and help others as other coaches had supported me and helped me and I, I really enjoy doing it but to be given opportunities at a higher level um, is, an, is amazing and I, I thank Bowles WA for that. So my bowling... <laughs> so just to finish off, because Ian's probably telling me to be quiet by now, because like he does with everybody else, my, my bowling career has been filled with fun and friends and plenty of rewards. I can't imagine what I would have been doing for the past 25 odd years if my knees hadn't given way and bowls hadn't entered my life. It was obviously meant to be. Thank you very much.